So thank you everybody to be there on time for the last day of the workshop and uh, this afternoon the presentation of the results of uh, our uh, week there. And uh, for the last day I uh, prepared a presentation on the, te on the topic theater and justice. But, uh, a little bit uh, more wide, uh, in, as uh, not uh, wide, wide. <laughs> <laughs> wide, if you want, <laughs> but I thought wide. <laughs> uh, um, uh, a bit more wide, as uh, in uh, comparison with what uh, we did uh, the, the two last days, uh, because uh, I, it's. So I, I will try to uh, the, to to think about the, the 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 common origins of theater and justice in the Greek antiquity, and uh, the the problematic that it uh, allows to us to to have uh, to that point. Uh, as an introduction, I like to uh, I like to remind. I know that I. Uh, you are already are, uh, sensible with that, but uh, that, that the, the theme uh, of justice in theater is a, a, an old theme, a very old theme uh, in the uh, the Greek tragedy uh, from Aeschylus, uh, the Herminides, for example. Uh, it uh, depicts the trial of, of, of Orestes for the murder of his mother, Clitemnest. Uh, Orestes is uh, pursued by the Hellenes, and the Hellenes want blood. They want uh, vengeance. They want uh, they are uh, archaic. They have archaic impulse. And Athena comes and decides to make a trial in order to go out of the archaic impulse of blood and to, to go to, in the area of the reason. And uh, Orest owns his life uh, to Athena, who uh, proposes to set up a civic tribunal based on uh, reasons. Uh, so that, that's the first occurrence I know. But uh, since there, the, 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 the trials have met uh, the entire history of theater as a uh, good idea. Uh, uh, in, uh, in the antiquity, but uh, also in the Middle Ages, and recently, as we uh, saw in the example from uh, the investigation, for example. So the question uh, could be, but why? Why is uh, justice always a, 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 a theme in, in theater? Uh, is that only uh, because uh, it's a its criminal aspect, uh, or, uh, because it provides a backdrop for stories that uh, fiction can simply uh, say is urban, or is there a deeper connection between uh, justice and theater? Analogies uh, between uh, uh, theater and justice have long been identified in terms of stage, setup, dramaturgy, certain procedures, and ceremonial. And some have suggested the possibility there could be a common origin uh, between uh, theater and justice, and the birth of law and theater uh, it would, would not be only concomitant, but would come from the same source. Uh, that's what we uh, will see. And uh, after all, that's true that uh, all the great plays, whether tragedies or comedies, can be seen or read as trials. We spoke about, about that. Uh, leaving aside the obvious cases of uh, Antigone or uh, Oedipus, but what about uh, Don, Don Juan? What about uh, Tartuffe? What and, and so on. What about the the whole the whole work of Rest, which placing the spectator in the position of judge? So there is a 
deeply kinship uh, between theatre and uh, the court. What about Richard III? What about Faust and, and so on? Uh, we'll uh, be asking ourselves to what extent the courtroom has, since its origins, been a kind of double of the theatre. Uh, what can we learn from this structural similarity? And perhaps identify, to identify the similarities and differences will enable us to determine what makes each of them unique. What can theatre do? What can justice do? We look at the common ancient origin of law and tragedy and then try, so that's my plan here, and then uh, try to identify the structural analogies between theatre and trial. Uh, this will lead us to the question their respective aims, a shared catharsis, and uh, uh, will ask us if it's still fruitful today, or if we have to to depass it, to to, to, to over to to, to, pass over. to pass over the question of judgment uh, uh, in the theatre. In, a, in order to uh, rethink the question of theatre on new grounds. It will be our uh, road for today. So, first, the origins of law and tragedy. Uh, at the beginning, the law was religious. The, the religion said what is permitted, what is forbidden. And uh, we can think about the law of Moses. We can think today about the Sharia. And it was the same in the uh, Greek antiquity. The law was religious. But when the law is religious, it signifies that the, the law is perfect, is absolute, is uh, indisputable. Uh, in It was the same in the in the in the Greece in the uh, in the antiquity, but uh, progressively there was a, di a distance between law and religion. But when there is a distance, the law is no more divine, no more perfect, no more absolute. Then law becomes an uh, imperfect human historical construct. As law is religious, it provides uh, uh, the, the, the mankind, the, the people, a stable universe, a, a reassuring, intangible universe. It's the universe of the archaic religious world and myths. But after the separation between law and religion, the universe becomes uncertain, ambiguous. It's the universe now of the Athenian city, with debates, we don't know uh, anymore what's the, the truth with us, sophism and so on. In the Hellenistic period, the law was a recent institution with new values, the values of the Athenian city. And the conflict between Antigone and Creon can be uh, seen as an illustration of the conflict between old and new values. The tension between the ancient religious and moral laws of the Greeks, Antigone, and the new laws of the city of Athens, Creon. And what is interesting, uh, interesting for us is that the tragedy is born while this moment of tension Tragedy is born when we begin to look at the myth with the A of the citizen. The, it is born while the, there, there was, uh, at the same time, in the, in the head, the old, the old world and the new world. And there was a tension between the, the, the two worlds. That was the time of the tragedy. The, the tragedy did, didn't last 
uh, it, uh, very long in the in the history. It only lasts one century, from uh, Aeschylus to Euripides, one century, and it was the, the century between uh, old old uh, world and new world. But when the new world was there, that there was no more place for the tragedy, because it is the tension between the boss that makes the tragedy possible. In the 5th century, the Athenian people began to think about their freedom as citizens. They asserted their, uh, their rights in political assemblies and judicial institutions. They become subjects of the law. <coughs> That's the, 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 the birth of the question of responsibility. The citizens are agents responsible for their actions. It's uh, in the, in, uh, an opposition to the religious conception of guilt. In the conception of, uh, the religious conception of, uh, of guilt, it's uh, an entire race who is guilty. Uh, and uh, there is a stain in the race, and it is trans transmitted from generation to generation as uh, sent by the gods. The individual is not responsible in the religious, archaic world. He is a victim of the gods. <coughs> This accession to responsibility is a, a fundamental event in the 5th century. And in tragedy, the two concepts are in constant tension. It is a tension between the old and the new concep conception of responsibility. The accent is on intention and responsibility in the tragedy the, it's always the question, to what extent are human beings really the source of their actions? <coughs> to what extent are we responsible for what we do? Or are we victims of the God of, of, of determinism? That's always the question of the tragedy. Oedipus, for example, is uh, responsible or victim? of the gods, and so on. We can't say that. That's the point of the tragedy. Every human decision is a simultaneous action of the individual making and the gods directing men in their decision making. So that was uh, to, to have the background of the, the, the birth of the, the tragedy and to understand why tragedy, tragedy disappeared after, because it was the new world with uh, democratic laws, debates, assembly, and so on. There was no more the, 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 the re relationship with the gods, and so on. Uh, so it's Vidal Naquet who said that? Yes, yes, yes. 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 But, uh, uh, the, this first part was with uh, Vidal Naquet, uh, Miss, Miss, Miss and Tragedy in the Antiquan Grace. Uh, so it, uh, the tra tragedy can only exist when the two conceptions uh, <coughs> come into confrontation, into tension. It is uh, the tension between two universes, archaic and modern, two orders, human and divine, two forms of guilt, a linear uh, with the family and individual, that fits tragedy. Now uh, that we saw that, so we'll uh, ask us what are the analogies between theater and trial uh, now. We can see analogies in the text, in the ceremonial ritual, and in the motifs and procedures. In the text, 
it will be interesting to try and analyze uh, a trial with the uh, poetic of Aristotle. And uh, we, we could see that uh, we will find the, the, the knot, the twist, the turns, the recognition, the reversal, the resolution, and so on. In uh, many aspects, a, tri a trials, and there are good trials, there are bad trials, there are good plays, there are bad plays. A, a trials uh, works as as a, as, a, as a play, and uh, we can use the same categories uh, forged by Aristotle to understand tragedy in order to understand a trial. The law, the, uh, as we have seen, uh, the, the words of law are. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, that's right. The, the words of law are uh, in the tragedy crime, fault, testimony, deliberation, judgment, punishment, victim, guilty. Those are words of law. And uh, all those, those words are in the. Uh, we can find all those words in, in tragedy. But there is a very important difference between the, the words in the law and in the tragedy. In the tragedy, a word is always ambiguous. For example, the word nomos, law, that used crayon, has not the same significance as the same words that use antigone. For antigone, Nomos is nomos of the gods. For Creon, nomos is nomos of the city. The same for the word uh, victim. As we, see, as we saw, Oedipus can be seen as victim or not. It, there is always an ambiguity uh, in, the, in the words, in the tragedy, and not in the law. The tragedy is, is, a, is a mean is a tool in order to, to ask the law at the time. A citation. Excuse me, just, just a question. If you mean by this way that um, the treasury is born uh, by fights between the law of God yes. and the human law, yes. can, can be a summary of that? Yes. Uh, Sur so tragedy, the spectator, that's, it, that, that's a citation, discovers the ambiguity of words, of values, of man. He recognizes the universe as conflicting and abandoning his old certainties. Open, open up to a problematic vision of the world, he makes himself, through the spectacle, a tragic conscience. He has no more. He's no more in a in a in a world that he can understand. Everything became ambiguous, uh, and so on. Conversely, we can find the words of theater in tragedy. Uh, that's not what I uh, in justice. I I I I wanted to drama actors protagonists scene of the crime and so on. Uh, that's, those are the, the same words. Uh, and uh, as we say, uh, a, a trial is a kind of, of play. We can speak of, uh, of unit, uh, un, uh, unite, unity of place, unity of action, unity of time, and so on. They are, they are really uh, the same structure. When we uh, look at the ceremonial, and the ritual, uh, they, are both, they are both a performance in front of an audience in a specific space, in a specific time. And uh, the uh, audience, the court now, uh, the, the, the court now is in session. It's a, a change of the order. We are no more in the ordinary order. We got in the judicial order. And for the theater, the three strikes, 
We chant of the order. We are no more in. We are no more speaking together in order. Okay, now we go into an, a new order. That's uh, make us go uh, out of ourselves, of our ordinary life. That's the same in, in the boss. Uh, in the boss, we can uh, find a game of masks, of simulacra. The judge take the, the law, the peruque. And, okay, and uh, an, uh, an interesting uh, citation of Roger Caillois, he said, in primitive, primitive societies, the person wearing the mask temporarily embodies the frightening powers. Which of the mask, who of the mask has the power of fright, of fear? Now the motives and procedures. In the past, there is a, always a conflict. The conflict for the dramatic tension, suspense, and often outcome. Uh, Agon means confrontation. The protagonist is those who confront its uh, other. And in the boss, there is a, an oratorial just, just uh, joute for the French, uh, which aim, uh, is the truth. In, the, in a trial, we are looking for the a judicial truth, not a philosophical and so on, but a judicial truth. And in a, in a, in a play, we are looking uh, uh, for, for the truth. Is uh, Dom John guilty or not? Uh, so on. And in the boss, there is a distribution of roles. And what is important to notice is that uh, in a trial, there is also the representation. The, the real conflict is in the speech, is at home, is private. In the trial, we have to represent it in order to be able to judge it. So the, the, the shift from the reality to the, to the representation is not only in theater, but also that's the, 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 the functionment, the, the functionment of, uh, of, of uh, justice uh, also. There is in the justice uh, a double shift from the real to the symbolic, to the spoken world, where recounting what is happens from private to the public. That's the, the shift in the justice. Before an audience. Now, uh, we can ask if the aim are the same in both uh, trial and justice and theater. As we, as we know, the, uh, the essence of the, of the trial is the pacification. Uh, it's uh, in order to calm the, the turmoil created by the crime, to restore the law after the chaos created by the crime. That's the, the main aim of a trial. But the essence of the tragedy is to restore the order, the cosmic politic, psychic order, upset by the tragic errors because of his hubris. Uh, it's uh, what uh, Aristoteles uh, uh, called the, the, the catharsis, the proper effect of the tragedy, purging of the passions to fear and pity. And in the boss case, we saw we need the representation. The mimesis. Because uh, in theater, we don't take pleasure uh, in the real. Uh, when we are in the street and we saw uh, a, a people uh, to be killed, and we see people that we can't take the pleasure. But when we are on a stage, 
there is a kind of pleasure. It's the, this, that shift that is uh, able to uh, have a pleasure. And the last part, critical perspectives. Uh, when the goal uh, of uh, of strategy is to, to, restore, to restore the, the order, said us Augusto Boal, it signifies that uh, it's a coercitive system. Uh, tragedy always follows a pattern that confronts the individual with accepted social rules. The individual is punished because he or she deviates in one way or another from the rules. The aim is always to restore order. But this order, said Augusto Boal, is fundamentally the order of the powers that be. So that's why for Augusto Boal, uh, we have to change of uh, poetic if we want to do the revolution. If we want to transform the world, we uh, can't accept the uh, catharsis perspective, because the catharsis help, help the world to, to maintain itself as it is. And another uh, critic of that is the critic from uh, a theorician, Sarazak, in a Critique du Théâtre, and uh, he, he explained wh why uh, Vinaver uh, rejects uh, the Brecht point of view. Uh, we, 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 rem we remember that for, for Brecht uh, there is uh, always a confrontation uh, with, uh, with, uh, between, between the spectator, but the, the audience and the stage, and the audience have to judge to judge uh, with uh, its own, con own conscience. But uh, that's always an e external point of view. And uh, now we're at the, the, the theater, uh, since uh, 50 years, is, uh, is looking for a new way with the suspension of judgment. Uh, not to be in a higher point of view, moral, theological, theological or political, but to, to be in the same, the, the, on the same, an, an horizontal uh, relation between audience and, and stage. And no, I'm here to judge as spectator. So it's uh, important, I think, to have that critical in the head in order to, to reflect about it. Uh, that was it. <laughs>